When did you first know about the program, officially, I believe, called Fast and Furious? To the best of your knowledge, what date? I'm not sure of the exact date, but I probably heard about Fast and Furious for the first time over the last few weeks. New documents obtained by CBS News show Attorney General Eric Holder was sent briefings on the controversial Fast and Furious operation as far back as July 2010. That directly contradicts his statement to Congress. Oh, wait a second. Eric Holder says he didn't quite understand the question. Fast and Furious, of course, the operation that allowed thousands of guns to walk from the United States to Mexico and eventually were in the hands of uh, some drug cartel leaders and operatives and resulting in, at least in one case, uh, the death of a U.S. agent. The woman who's been leading on this story, who's really broke this story initially, is Cheryl Atkinson of CBS News. She's an investigative correspondent there. And she has been after these documents to see who in the Justice Department authorized this project and this operation uh, now for some time. And finally, these documents have been released. And Cheryl Atkinson is with us now. Uh, Cheryl, uh, so what exactly is the Justice Department saying to deflect criticism or concern that Eric Holder might indeed have, have said something that was untrue to Congress. Well, in between the yelling um, that I received from Justice Department yesterday, the spokeswoman who had not put anything in writing, I was asking for her explanations, you know, so there'd be clarity and no confusion later over what had been said. She wouldn't put anything in writing, so we talked on the phone, and she said things such as, um, the, the question Holder answered was different than the one he asked, but the way he phrased it, he said, you know, very explicitly, I probably heard about Fast and Furious for the first time over the last few weeks. Um, we have evidence that Justice Department turned over this material to Congress. Um, I don't think it's all of it, but they turned over evidence of memorandum sent to the uh, Attorney General himself. Whether If he wants to say he didn't read it, I suppose he could say he didn't read this. But as far back as July uh, 2010 in the documents they sent, uh, he was getting information on this program. So he certainly heard of it sooner. I don't think they're denying that now. They're just saying, well, he, he meant when did he first hear of the controversy about Fast and Furious, and that was a few weeks ago. That's, I believe that's their argument. So just so we're clear, is it, is it known now that he was personally aware of the number of guns that, that had crossed into Mexico, or was he only aware of the broad, as far as we know with these documents, the broad contours of this operation? What did he exactly know? In some, I don't think we have the total picture, So, but in the papers they've turned over, there are about one paragraph briefings given about weekly starting in July that talk about the case by name and do mention uh, how many guns have been recovered in Mexico. It doesn't say explicitly we have let guns walk. It doesn't say anything like that. Mm -hmm. But there's no doubt that this case involves straw purchasers, people purchasing weapons in the United States, and somehow or another the weapons being allowed to end up in Mexico. And there was a huge number. I believe it was over a 1,000 mentioned to the, in, in one of the briefing notes uh, that we saw that was sent to Attorney General Holder. We know that some concerns were raised, right, initially about these these guns crossing the border. But as far as you know right now, those concerns were not raised within the Justice Department about the fact that the guns were actually crossing the border, not not just being tracked up to the border, but crossing the border and landing into the hands of these violent criminals? Well, we only have a partial picture. If you look at where this story has come, when we first reported it back in February-ish of this year, the whistleblower, John Dotson, was the only one publicly saying by name what had happened, an ATF agent. And DOJ and everybody else painted him as some sort of strange liar, outlier, not telling the truth. We've now gone from there, the one guy saying this happened, to pretty much everybody admitting it happened and saying at first, well, it was only the Phoenix office that knew of ATF, and then, okay, maybe headquarters knew, but nobody at Justice or White House, and then, okay, People at Justice knew, but maybe we didn't know the details. And I, I think if you look at the extraordinary way this has progressed over the months and where we've come, it really, it's pretty amazing portrait. From the very beginning, the administration didn't really want to provide information, right? And in fact, from what I remember, and we had you on, I think the day or two after you first reported this, the, uh, the response was, this is an operation that was in place 
for years and basically just dismissing concerns. Uh, and I found the response initially to be you know, very evasive and very dismissive. Well, they still won't answer. You know, they, they float things out there without quite answering the questions. They haven't provided um, all the documents. I, I just think we still don't know the whole picture. But, for example, when they suggest Attorney General Holder, well, these weren't real full-blown briefings. These were just little notes. My follow-up question is, well, did he? are you saying he didn't read them? Are you saying these are the only briefings he got and nothing further? But they won't go, they will never go on the record with some sort of firm answer to these questions. They just sort of float these explanations out there. And mm-hmm. I thought it was interesting that the, the DOJ press person would not put anything in writing yesterday for me and now mm-hmm. wants to argue the point as to what had been said on the phone and what should have been said in my report. Well, that's why I wanted it in writing so they can't come back later and claim you know, claim things were said that weren't said. So they were literally screaming at you? Yes. Um, well, the DOJ woman was just yelling at me. A uh, guy from the Who White was House it? on Friday night literally screamed at me. Um, Who was the person? Who was the person at Justice screaming? Eric Schultz. Oh, well, the person screaming was Tracy Schmaller. She was yelling, not screaming. And oh, the yelling. person who screamed at me was Eric Schultz at the White House. Mm. I thought we were supposed to be so transparent. This is a new era of transparency and... Pelosi was draining the swamp, and the White House was going to turn a new page, and that was actually good to hear. We were like, okay, let's, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. And then the first time a reporter asked a serious question about at least a Justice Department move here, the, the reporter is yelled at and screamed at. And I, I would imagine, Cheryl, that if, let's say, an NBC reporter had been yelled at and screamed at by Karl Rove, we would have been hearing about it for years afterward afterward in the bush administration it would be all the bullies over at the white house once again shutting down true inquiries into their goings on behind closed doors but you know and i think all along cheryl you're reporting i'm sounding like a a pathetic suck up to you but pretty much all along you've just been asking for simple simple answers and okay well this happened maybe you didn't expect this to happen but you know who kind of authorized it these are kind of simple questions they can't be that complicated to get to the bottom of someone had to do the ultimate sign off on thousands of guns do we know the exact number that went over to mexico we know more than 2000 and fast and furious <laughs> and i will soon be reporting on the fact that that is not the only case so oh. ah. 2000 for that operation according to the agents involved Okay, well, now now I think I'm led to believe that Eric Holder doesn't read his memos and the president doesn't read his memos about green energy. So when people are warning him about green energy, president, oh, okay, maybe he's not reading those. Maybe this, these just little paragraphs that Eric Holder is getting on things like Fast and Furious, I mean, he has a lot on his plate, so maybe he just couldn't, couldn't read all of that. But do you, do you expect an, another document dump anytime soon? I think we'll just get little by little. Um, there may be drip, drip, more drip. subpoenas. Yes, and there may be more subpoenas coming from Congress soon so that there's uh, more of a push. The White House turned over some documents, which I wrote about over the weekend, but withheld some documents. Um, It is sort of a drip drip. And I'm certainly not the one to make the case for DOJ and White House about what I'm doing wrong. Right. They will tell you that I'm the only reporter, as they told me, that is not reasonable. They say the Washington Post is reasonable, the L.A. Times is reasonable, the New York Times is reasonable. I'm the only one who thinks this is a story. And they think I'm unfair and biased by pursuing it. And my side of the story is I never knew where the story was going when I when I talked to those whistleblowers back in January and February. And I didn't care where it went. I'm just sort of digging away and going where it leads. But I, I'm sure they take it very personally because it's very important. They have very important implications. 